Hi, my name is Kareem Benamar, and I'd like to talk to you about the differences between rich people and poor people and whether that's a problem. And I'd like to look at it from the point of view of ethics, from the point of view of society, and from the point of view of economics. Now, first, from the point of view of ethics, it really depends on what you believe. You might believe that the things that you've earned and the things that you've made, that they belong to you, and you can decide what to do with it. Just share them with your family, or with the next generation, with your children. Or you might believe that the things that you've earned, the things that you've made, uh, are also a product of society, of your education, and of everything that was made available for you to do this. And therefore that some of the value, or a large part of the value, should go back to society, and that society can then redistribute it and share it. Uh, one is perhaps more individualistical or egotistical, the other is more altruistic. Uh, the care of others is more important. And we see that in societies there's differences too. Uh, the, the societies in the south that are more Catholic, or the societies in the east that are based around family, they tend to say that your allegiance is to your family and to your community and not to the larger group. The societies in the north, which are based on more Protestant religion, the allegiance is to the community as a whole. So you give the money to the group and then the group decides what to do with it. But the question is really for you, what do you believe? Do you believe that the things that you've made are yours, or do you believe fundamentally that the things that you've made belong to the group? In terms of society, it's a little bit easier because we have a thing called a Gini coefficient. And the Gini coefficient measures how much inequality there is in a society. If the coefficient is high, there is a lot of inequality, meaning there's a large gap between poor people and very rich people. If the Gini coefficient is low, that means that there is a much smaller gap between poor people and rich people and a higher group in the middle. And the research shows that if you have a society with a high level of inequality, with a high Gini coefficient, then that society is a lot more unstable and disrupted. There, there is a lot of uh, criminal elements and there is a lot of unhappiness and there's a lot of disturbance. And that societies which have a lower Gini coefficient, people tend to be happier. There's a higher quality of life for everybody, for the poor people, but also for the rich people. And that would suggest that if you have societies with too much difference, with a difference between rich and poor people that goes beyond a certain level, then everybody loses as a result. Everybody gets a lower quality of life. Everybody gets a society that is more unstable, that is more disrupted, where there's a lot more tension. And, and that is perhaps not the result that you'd want. So if you want the values that we value as a human being to be apparent in the world, you would want to prefer a society with a certain kind of difference between rich and poor people. And I think those studies are fairly conclusive. Now, from the point of view of economics, there's an interesting point too, because you could say that from a point of view of economics, if everybody was equal, then that wouldn't work because there'd be no incentive to do business or to trade or to be good at doing business. Um, and that this kind of differences between rich and poor and the capacity to earn wealth um, are there to help the value for everybody. And there's an argument being made that if rich people get richer, then there's a lot more investment and everybody gets richer as a process. But the question is whether there's also kind of a, a top to this. There's a maximum amount of wealth that, that is productive. And I believe there is because it depends how the money is spent. If you think about what poor people spend money on, they spend money on things that they really need and food and clothing and stuff that they use immediately. And so it, it really stimulates the economy and it creates value for everybody. It creates value for the people who have little money, but it creates value all around. Now, the way rich people spend money, because they have most of what they need, is that they buy stuff they don't perhaps need. They buy big boats or big houses or big cars and they perhaps buy lots of them. And then, of course, the stuff doesn't get used very much. And, and that money is much less active. It doesn't actually get reinvested in the economy in the same way. And it really also depends on what we mean by property. Because property, the, 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 the private property, is the capacity to stop other people from using your things, whether those are objects or whether they're virtually, as in intellectual property and copyright. If I have 10 houses and 10 cars and 10 boats, and they're mine, I can stop you from using them and I can leave them empty if I want to. And so the use of the, even though I own these things, the economic use that's being made of them actually goes down a lot. So the more rich people you have, the less the things that we have are being used and the less the money actually circulates within the economy. And the same thing is true of copyright.
If I own ideas, I can make people pay me for using them, or I can stop people from using them, or I can make it very expensive, as in the case of medicines or things like that. And so that also destroys a lot of value. So from the point of view of economics, there's certainly a good claim to be made that we need some form of inequality. There needs to be some form of people to amass capital and to amass money, because that stimulates activity. But there's also a very good claim to be made to that once you reach a certain point, once you go over a certain amount of ownership, then ownership becomes very counterproductive and it actually stops things from happening instead of enabling things from happening. So the conclusion there would be if there's too many rich people, if there's too much of a gap between poor and rich from an economics point of view, that would make us all poorer. Well, I hope this has shed some light on this for you. Uh, Decide where you stand on the point of view of ethics. Decide whether you agree with this idea of society, whether societies with high inequality are less stable and less fun to live in. And think perhaps of what property does and how rich people spend their money and poor people spend their money. If you've enjoyed this, share it. If you join the club, uh, check out the website. Uh, if you haven't enjoyed this, sorry for wasting your time and see you soon.